welcome to Brotu Training. My name is Osanyomo Osanyoko and I'm going to show you how to do a simple design project on Brotu Software 2019. We start by creating a project. First new project, we'll give it a name, training underscore 4, because you're not allowed to use um, space. These are already allowed characters. So use OK. And then I'll select the building code of practice that I'm using for this project. In this case, I'm using uh, UK ES8110. Now click Import. The first step will be to generate the grid lines for our project. And you can see from that, uh, these are the grid lines and the spacing. I'll be using these values later. So I'll come to Proton. You come to the structure tree area, you go to Asus, right click, you'll find Autogonal Asus Generator, and you click it. So holding Ctrl on your keyboard, this will have big reference point for your grid lines. So I'm going to click this point, that's my reference points for my grid lines. I'll click this, and it will bring out this box, and here I'm going to type the spacing. So for the direction one as a spacing, I'll be typing these values, and for the direction two, I'll be typing these values. Let me go back to Proto, and type the values. So I'll separate each value with a comma. Now when I'm done, I'm just going to click OK. And this will generate the access lines. The next step will be to make adjustments to my access lines if I have to. And to do this, probably I want to cough the access line at the back. Um, all I'll do is just click on the access line. I'll go to properties, change the instruction method to cough. I zoom in and delete the existing one. I'm going to draw a new one. And I'll call it a bit. Yeah, this is okay. I can do the same thing to grid 6. I'll click, right click, properties, multi segment, insertion method. And then delete the existing one. And I'll draw this. I make multi segments. When I'm done, just click enter. Okay. Update and close. The next step will be to place columns on the axis intersection. And to do this, I'll come to column. I'll give the column sizes. The centricity set to the center, and I'll place the columns. Oh, there's this one here. Close this when I'm done. To place a wall, I'll click on this wall, thickness of the wall, and the extension. I'll close this. 
I can combine the words, click on the three words, right click and merge vertical members. I can change the shape of this column. If I click on the column, right click, go to properties, I have the section manager. If I click on the section manager, we have a lot of shapes we can use. So I'm gonna use this star shape and give the values. In this case, they're all going to be 230. change the shape. The next step will be to determine how the column will be reinforced. So I'm going to click on this column, right click, I'll go to Polyline Column Editor, then I'll come to Automatic Containment, Recount Bar, and uh, I'll click OK. Now if I want to add links to this, all I need to do is to click from Reinforcement to reinforcement. And this will add links to it. I can click OK now. That will be how this column will be reinforced. Perhaps if I have um, slanting columns in this structure, probably for C1 and C2, I want to make these slanting columns, so I'm going to delete them. Come to column or to copy the same properties, I'll just select one existing column and come to column. And this will copy the properties of this column. So I'll place the column at here, the top end of the column will be that will be here, and I'll pick the bottom end to be this place and I'll update. I'll do the same for this bottom end and I'll update. I'll close this. The next step will be to place beams. So I'll come to beam, the width of the beam, the depth of 50, and I'll place the beams from column point to column point. Now for this curve, what I'm going to do is just draw a window across. Yes, okay. I'm just going to make a curve beam. You can check this on 3D. Okay. You notice uh, this beam is split at this point and I don't want it to be so. So I'm going to select it. Draw a new beam from this point to this point. And I'm not going to split. Close this. Okay. This is what we have. Now to display both the 3D and 2D on the same screen, I'll come to Window. Type vertically. If I want the 2D on the left hand side, I'm going to click activate the view and I'll type vertically again. So that's it. The next step will be to define those for the structure, and to do that, I'll come to build and setup. I'll start with the slab loads. I'll create a new slab load. Uh, let's call it um, row two. I'll give it materials. 
or add um, maybe use a cement floor screed of thickness 50 and I'll give it a um, size in this case I'm going to be using um, let's say marble make it 12 and probably for the other end of the slab that has the ceiling finishes I can add that too have um the ceiling here okay and make it um 12 probably 12 and an update and you see the total load value and now click ok i'll do the same for wall type library I'll click on it i'll create a new wall and in this case i have uh, 2 to 5 mm then brick wall and because I'm in Ghana, so I'm going to use um, probably Ghana. I'll select the materials. I'll go to brick and I'll give it a wall thickness of 25. For the plaster, I'll give it a thickness which will be times 2 because it's made in plaster in both sides. So I'll make it 24. And I can add all the materials if I want to. And when I'm done, I'll just click OK. The next step will be to place slabs on the structure. So I'll come to slab. I'll give my slab a thickness of 175, within 25 as cover. And I'll go to loads. Uh, this is a safe width load. And for additional loads, I can come to row 2 which I created earlier you see the additional load library um, ok and if I'm not comfortable with this value I can actually type in a value here well, enter value and type in a value but I'm going to use row 2 and for the imposed load you will know, have a list of imposed loads here so all you need to do is um, right click and you see a list of imposed loads in this case, uh, I'm going to use bedrooms and dormitories, and I'll start placing the slab by clicking the regions of beams. So place them. The next step will be to place a um, cantilever slab. Okay, and to do that, uh, let me close this for now. I'll repeat the slab. And this time I'm going to select um, type 12 for my slabs. You notice a new feed is active and this is called the cantilever length. So I'm going to type the length of the cantilever, which is 1100, and I'll click from colon point to colon point and place it. Now, uh, not in all cases that we have uh, straight cantilevers, probably it has a curved end. And to do that on Proto, we're going to do that. We're going to use this to code the slab stroke column edge. So I'm going to click this and start with my lines from this point to this point. I'll hit enter. I'll draw another line from this point to this point. I'll hit enter. And I'll close it up with a curve from this point to this point value if I want and to do that uh, I'm gonna hit that to my keyboard and type the value I need yeah very easy next step will be to place a slab here so I'm just gonna select the slab and show type 12 is not active just pick on any of them and place a slab this is good The next step will be to insert our wall loads on the beams and to do that uh, I'm just going to come to probably just one beam right click see edit beam wall load I'm going to click that now from the drop down you have the list of wall loads so I created that for Ghana I'm going to click this and specify the height of the wall which is 
when I'm done, I'll just click OK. Now to copy this wallow to other beams, I'm just going to select the beam. I click and copy beam wallow, and I'll come to other beams. I click and paste beam wallow. Yes. Okay, this is good. And if you have this disturbing your view, you can deactivate the wallow layer by coming here. So it has been deactivated, but it's deactive. Now the next step would be to insert more floors. And to do that, I'll come to stories and right click uh, insert story. I'm gonna use five floors here and I'll click OK and yes. It's going to create new floors. I'll go back to story one. Okay. Now, if I want to put uh, probably a, an extra load other than the one load on the beam, I can click on the beam, right click, and I'll find edit member loads. Add the new load, you have options here. What I'm interested in point load, on reference from the uh, direction of the beam, I'm going to time 2 meters for. The dead load value, I will use 2 and use 2 also. I'll click OK. When I'm done, I'll just click OK. Taking back the filter and use pandas. Okay. The next step will be to generate other floors. If I have the same elements in story 1 and 2, I'll come and make sure my story 1 is active. And I'll go to stories, right click, I'll click generate. And this will be my source story, this will be my destination, and I'll click OK. And now this has copy. Probably I don't want this to be a starting column this time around. So I'm going to activate this view and come to story 2. I'll click on the column, right click properties. For the bottom point, I'll take it back to this place and update. I'll repeat the same process for this other column. Right click properties for the bottom point, I'll take it back to this place and update. And close this. If I want to make more modification, probably add columns to this point. I can do this. Uh, just select on a, on a column, copy the properties from this place to this place and this place. And this is okay. Now, to align this to the as this line, I can, or maybe when I select the column, I'll come to properties, then I'll align it to as this one and click update to align to the as this. I'll do the same for this. I think this is okay. I'll do this for this one properties. Align it to this one and update. This is fine. Now, perhaps if I want to slope any part of the slab, I'm going to use the plane definition to and to do that. Uh, if I want to slope this back slabs, I'll click plane definition. I'll come to section. I'll switch it to as its region. And I'll hold down control and click the access region and the other one. And this is a plane called P1. Now, you notice there are three values here. There's a value for point 0.1, which is equal to 0, and a value for point 0.2, which is equal to 0, and a value for point 0.3, which is equal to 0. Now, this is the point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3 value. I'm sloping it downwards in this direction by 1000. I'm going to retain the value for 1 and 2 as 0 because it's in the same level of the existing slab. But for this point, which has gone downwards, I'm going to change it to minus 1. And when I'm done, I'm just going to update. 
I'll come to plain, right click, and move members to plain definition of the case. And that's what slope it downwards. I think this is fine. Okay. The next step will be to create uh, openings. If I want openings on the slab, I'll come here to slab openings and drop them. Specify the size of the opening. I'll come, I'll pick my reference points and I'll place it where I want to place it. Maybe here. I can also make it circular if I want to. I can change it to a uh, polyline. This time around, I'm just going to draw the polyline. Now, if I don't want this hole to go entirely through the slab, uh, maybe I want it to reach that region or I want it to just depress by a certain value. I'm going to click drop region definition and insert the value if it's positive it's going to raise out it you see it has raised if it's negative it's going to be depressed so now yeah, i'm going to do it like this and press now to put uh, additional loads on the slab to do that uh, i'm going to come here to slab loads if i want to use a point load i'm just going to type it out 10 here, yeah. that's my reference point, and place it here. Yeah. For line load, I'm going to type the value maybe 5 for both ends. And for area load, I'm going to type the value, let's say 4. I'm going to draw the area. Or I'm just going to type the values here. Yeah, let's go. And I'll close this. Now, for three tree, I'm going to use waffle and ribs. Well, I want to generate the columns to three tree. To do that, I ensure I'm in story two. I'll go to stories, right click. Generate. I'll pick three, and I'll only select columns. Click OK. Yes. Columns selected, and I'll delete the ones I don't need. That's this one. I'll delete them. Now. If you forgot to send maybe just one element and you want to send just this one element to the other floor, I uh, can select the element, right click, then you come to generate member to other stories, click that, you take it to story tree and click OK, yes, and this is generated to the other floor. Yeah. The next step will be to place our uh, Beams. Now, to do that, I'll activate the story tree in my plan view. Double click. I'll come to beam. Maybe I want to use a width of uh, 300 by 450 for my beams. If it's uh, upstand beam, uh, I'll make this zero and 450. But since it's a downstand beam, I'm just going to leave it for 50 here. And I'll place my beams. I'm going to bring this one out. Bring it out. Split. Okay. Oh. 
Now we can actually shift these beams without changing the properties eccentricity. If I select them and just move to the right. Yeah, I can move them. I can do the same thing for here. I can move them. Yeah, that's good. Can do the same for these ones, move it, and for this one here, can move it. Yeah, that's good. You can also do the same thing for columns if you want to. Yeah, that's good. Now, the next step will be to place my ribs. Oh, I skipped a beam. Let's use this. Okay, that's good. Now, let's place the ribs. I'll start with this rib. Now, this will be the width of the rib. And this will be the depth plus toppings. And this will be the topping. And this will be the clear spacing between each rib. So I'm going to place this rib. If I want to change the direction of rib, I'll come to this action, change the direction to 90 and update. And it shows that um, you change the insertion method. Correctly, the insertion method is set to as this region. So I'm going to take it back to beam region. Now, I'll place another rib here. Change the direction to 0. Update, change direction. Now for waffle, I'm just going to place it here. I'll come to generate again. I'll change it to gridage. Update. For waffle, waffle. And when I'm done, I'm just going to update and close this. This is for story tree. Now for story 4, if I want to repeat or make uh, story 4 and story 3 similar flows, I'll come to stories, edit story. Now I'll select story 3 and story 4 and make it similar. When I'm done, I'm just going to click OK and yes. So if I make any modification to any of the flows, it's going to affect it. So they are both similar flows. I'm going to undo. Yeah, bring it back. Okay. Now for story five, I'm going to be using a uh, flash lamp for my story five. Uh, so I'm only interested in the walls and the columns from story four. So I'll keep it active in story four. I've got a series. Generate story. I'm not interested in the walls and the columns. So click the file and take it. Yeah. Now I'm going to place my flash slab. So create slabs or take my plan view to story five. I'll select slab. I'll give it a thickness of let's say 200. My session method, I prefer using Asus region for flash lab. I will now control and click Asus region. This is okay. Mm. Now, I want to add a drop panel to the column. I'll click on the column. I want to insert the drop panel. Right click properties. And I'll go to drop. I'll insert drop panel. I'll give it a size. Maybe um, let's use 1000 in this case. 
by 1000 as electricity set to center and the value of the drop let's use um let's say 400 and I'll be so this is the drop panel on that column I'll close this now we can explode this wall make it three individual walls if we want to so all you have to do is click right click find explode the energy members and it's going to explode so probably you want to add an opening to the side of the wall so i'm going to click it right click and i'll come to wall opening editor i'm going to add an opening i think uh, this value is okay mm, well, I can increase the height of the wall to so probably 1500. Okay, then I'll click OK. This is the opening. When you're done with the model, it's very important you set slab types automatically because there are various slab types in Prota. We have all size continuous and down to the slab type 0 and we didn't actually do this on our own but we can set this automatically and to do that you know, just come to let's close this you come to the floor stories uh, structure tree then right click you set it automatically for it and I'll go to uh, story 2 and 1 Story 2, I'll do the same thing for there. I click, set it automatically. I'll do the same for story 1. Set automatically and OK. OK, I think this is good. Now, the next step will be to set our project parameters and properties. So I'll come to Analysis, building analysis. Then I'll start with parameters. I'll check the building code. Come to foundation, check the allowable stress of soil. It's okay. For lateral loading, I'll make modifications if I want to. For lateral drift, I'm going to design as a breeze. And um, for title, I can put my project. <laughs> Either or made by made by check by project number. I can put the date. And I'll click OK. And I'll move to load combinations. Now I'll click load generator. I'll select to create unfactored G and Q combination. That's the dead and life combination. And I'll switch to horizontal load. If I want to insert wind load, I'll activate wind load. And I'll click OK. And I'll check this. From my unfactored load, I can see. It's one and one. Now close this. And I'll move to wind and story loads. I'll come to wind load calculator. I give a wind basic speed of uh, probably let's use 10 for this case. Specify that there was holding the frame. Then I'll apply and check the loads. I'll click OK and I'll move to edit materials. Now, this way I'll specify the grade of concrete, the grade of steel, and the bar sizes that I need for my design. For concrete columns, I'm going to just leave it at um, um, 2025 and apply to all other elements. I'll click OK. Now, for steel, 
I leave it at four ten. Refer to other elements. So okay. Uh, for column bar sizes, let's deselect all. I want to use um maybe just sixteen, twenty, and twenty five. Now for words, I want to use let's deselect all twelve and sixteen. Now for beams. I want to use 16, 16, 20, and 25. Now for reads, I want to use 10 and 12. For links, I want to use 10. Now I'll switch to foundation floor. I'll do the same for the size. I want to use 12 and in some cases 16. Links, uh, we use 10, it's OK. And I'll click OK. And when I'm done, I'll just close this. Next step will be to do uh, FE decomposition of loads down to the last floor. OK, to do that, I'll come here, FE decomposition. I'll come to batch FEJs down. I'll click OK. I'll continue. And this will run the FE chase down of loads. And when it's done, I'm just going to close and apply to all beams in the model. The next step will be to do analysis. For analysis, I'll come back to analysis, building analysis. I'll switch to analysis tab and start analysis. Now, if you notice, warning and cutter during building analysis. This morning must be carefully checked before performing building analysis. This is probably because of the sloping slab here. So what you do, you select both of them, right click, properties, then you remove it from floor diaphragm and check if the problem continues. Yes. I'll close this. Okay. Let's run the analysis again. But this time around, I'm going to click it from here. Analysis. Now, because I made changes, it's telling me to do the FE load decomposition. So I'm going to do that now. Come to load decomposition.
for links you can see information here for share design in case you want to change the spacing of the links you can adjust it and edit for slenderness you can choose to brace one side and make the other side unbraced and edit you can change the effective length factors and edit when you're done just click ok and close the next step will be to do the beam design so we'll start with the story beams same issue here go to settings check our parameters that's our maximum t maybe let's use um maximum t of 20 and check and make modifications to this if you want just go through all your settings and save then we run a batch mode design select all t If you notice it fade maybe probably let's check our settings let's introduce a new bar say y25 and save and run the batch mode design again Some have passed and some have fade. The same process we're going to just to fit it through fade beam sizes. Let's double click and see why it failed. Okay, this is deflecting. Maybe probably we need to increase the section of this beam. And to do that, we'll come to beams, particular one with an issue. We increase the section, interactive design. It's okay, we come to Steve bars. Now it's okay. 600 watt. So we'll close this. Then move to the next one. Now it's um deflecting at that point. We come to beams, change the value to 600, interactive design, we click OK, come back to Steve bars, and that is good. And click OK. And then you make modifications to other beams that failed. So I'll quickly proceed to designing the slabs. So let's start with um, story one. I'm going to go to the slab strip, join it in X direction. So this means I'm um, starting from my slab starting from a ball point or a cantilever in this case if i'm to draw from this point to this point which is a cantilever to a ball i'll start from the cantilever to a ball in x direction i'll do this now for the next strip which is from a bulb to cantilever i'll do this from bulb to cantilever stay in the x direction now this one is from bulb to bulb now for this i'm going to draw a strip and stop it halfway so now i'm going to do start from bulb to slab so there's it now for the other direction y direction i'll switch it and i'll do it from bulb to bulb Okay. Now, for the second story, I want to draw a few strip for the second story because of uh, I prefer using FE analysis for this floor. So I'll come to strip, find FE strip, the same process, x direction, cantilever to bulb. Bulb to cantilever, bulb to bulb, 
box slab Going to go in y direction now I'll do F analysis to do that I'll come to finite element thickness factors I'll come to graphing and gripping and give it um, maybe a typical dead load of 6.4 and a typical life load of 2 and click OK so I have the values here now now to do for all of them I'll come to Batch, chase down. I'll change the values. Be similar for all. Now click OK. Continue. And yes. Under this four stories. And when it's done, I'll just click OK. Now, for post processing, I'll switch to story 2, which I'm analyzing with um, FE. I'll come to post processing, analysis post processing. Now, this is for my story 2. I can check the results. For the results, threshold for the ultimate load case, you can see displacements for petty moments, or I can use the standard contours to check uh, the design moments and displacements also. These are the color codes. When I'm done, I'm just going to close this. Consider plate torsion effect. I'll select it and click OK. When I'm done, I'm going to close. Now, in story 2, to view slab reinforcements, Come to ST or date ST bars, and this will show the ST bars with FE analysis. Now, for the ribs and uh, the waffle slab, which are in story 3, I'll click on them. Now, I'll go to strip, FE strip, FE tab, and FE rib strip. Now I'm going to draw strips in the direction of the ribs. No, in this case the rib went all the way down. Okay. So I'll do that for a while. Just for a while, I'll take this one, I'll return the slab, I can go with Y, so let me switch to X, and for this too,
and I want to post analysis. Standard contour. I'll do for a correction. From the map, I can tell that uh, the slab has fade in this region. I probably need to increase uh, the slab thickness. I can do that now, maybe in another training, but uh, you have to increase the thickness of the slab. I'll close this and close this and transfer the slab strip results. The transfer foundation beam results, infinite element method, and I can check the pi results. If it's okay, then I'll close this and I'll close this. The next thing will be to update T. I'll update T. Now, you notice the strip is telling us that uh, the section is insufficient, which is true from our FE analysis. Now, to design the raft beam, we'll come to beam, foundation beams. To do that, uh, we'll check uh, the settings and parameters, the cover, the subdate cover. Let's give it uh, 16, save, yes, you know, batch mode. Uh, if you notice it fails, that means you have to introduce a new stick. Go to analysis, begin analysis, materials for foundation floors, the foundation, I'm going to add uh, 20 and 25, and click OK, and close, then we'll proceed to doing the analysis again, foundation games, come to settings, Parameters we select uh, 20 for maximum, save and batch mode. Now, all the has passed. So, if all that's failed, you have to run through the settings, increase the section until they pass. Okay, for reports, if you want to see the reports, all we need to do is come to this place, we can run the batch mode because we did another analysis. Let's run batch mode redesign. To see the report, we click design reports and activate um, interaction diagrams in reports and sections. In the reports, I click OK. So I can see the column reports. I'll close this. I can repeat the same thing for beams. For my ribs, I can click on reports, design reports, and OK. This will generate the reports. I can close this and close this. Now to view details, I'll come to concrete design and load product details. Yes. And then I'll come to auto generate details. And I'll go through these settings and I'll I'll go through this in a, another class. But uh, let's just do a uh, ground sure. activate to be in a, in a sheet on my column elevation option 2 I'll generate it through stories and I'll click draw and just place it somewhere on my screen
Now you can see the details and the bar bearing schedule alongside. For the foundation beams, for the columns, and for the slabs, I have a bar bearing schedule by the side, and that will be all for now.